Hello, welcome to the World Cafe Podcast. This podcast has been designed with curated content that centers on the power of words. Can we really do anything without speaking? Can we really do anything without the agency of words? Yes, that is what this podcast is all about. And I am your host, Amakri Isowe, your neighborhood word trader. I believe in the power of words, for it is the unit of creation. I trade in words to profit my world. Like I told you in part one, <laughs> the discussion will be sizzling and hot. I know you're just getting those juices out of Mr. Folusho Phillips. Yes, this is part two of that discussion. Yeah, what was it like in part one? Mm, it was good. Now listen to the part two. Let's just get into the gist. I'll see you at the other end of the story. Yes, now to my other question. Mm-hmm. You know, when I came in, I saw the life around. I see that the person within this space loves the arts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so... How, how, how do you balance it, the arts and what you do and all that? No, it's just, it's just, uh, it, it's just, well, it's, it's like saying, you know, how can I discuss? It's, it's like having good things around you. Mm-hmm. you know, I, I, I discovered the arts as, um, first of all, when I was in school, I was very interested in, in arts. You know, I, I did art in my school certificate. I passed that like, drawing those things that doesn't even follow through. But but just on, on a realistic level, it's part of my profile. Mm. I'm a high eye individual. Mm. Uh, again, high eyes are people who you go to their office and they have their photographs of the family. Yeah. It's people who are very expressive and uh, they, they like good surroundings because that is their nature. Mm. You know, and I recognize this but that's not the way I am. So I also, you know, I, 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 I think that this art helps to beautify the place. I don't necessarily buy art as an investment. Okay. I'm not buying it I want to sell it at all because I can tell you many examples of people that have invested in art, they moved on in life and their children have just dumped it in, you know. They didn't, I, have, I have an uncle who, who, who was phenomenal artwork, phenomenal. And when he passed away, Somebody had to come to tell the children that, please, if I don't want to cheat you, but what you guys are sitting on, you are, you are all looking at your father's property. All these ask machines, you two, one million, two million, three million, four million, five million, you know, you better go and curate them. And if you know you're doing of no value to you, sell them and get your, your true return on investment yeah, and get right. whoever wants to do it, do it. So I buy my from point of view, beauty. Okay. Is it beautifying the place? Is it is it working well? And uh, once once that is uh, once once it satisfies that, uh, and that's that's just it. And just moving it. Okay. The same thing in my office. Uh, when we when we had an office, we don't have one anymore. <laughs> okay. When we had an office. It's the same thing. Make sure that they have you know, after. So what's life for you? Family life. How do you unwind? How do you relax? And considering your schedule. And your person, how do you? I, I went on a Harvard program once, and at, on the last day of the program, very intensive one, the, um, the guy who was our course coordinator, he said, A lot of people ask you, How do you relax? He said, But it's, it's um, uh, the way you work is the way you retire as well, mm-hmm. in a way. Uh, and the minute you start creating, a huge difference in when you work and when you retire. Sometimes you find the rapid deterioration takes place in your person. So what I'm saying is that I I I will say I'm about 75-80% retired from the likes of a Phillips consulting. But a new life has taken off for me. I sit on several boards, a lot more than I did in the past. I sit on boards of committees. Mm. Uh, I do a lot of talking. I do a lot of advisory work. Uh, not necessarily paid, but just keep one busy, keep yourself intellectually engaged, and and that's that's what I do. So when you ask me, 
what do I do to relax? What what I do to relax today? What I did to relax two years ago, ten years ago, five years ago? Music. I love music. I listen to music a lot. I never seen the advent of uh, Spotify. Spotify. And, you know, it, it's really so, music on the go. Yes, always on the go. Uh, and uh, uh, and I'm a very people oriented person. So I love to entertain. Love to uh, work with people. Uh, you find that uh, you just you just carry on. So. You know, you retire into something else and not into nothing. Into something else, not into nothing. I like that. <laughs> you don't retire into nothing. Yes, you, you retire into something. Else. That's beautiful. You know, why I ask that question is because a lot of us, a good number of us, see retirement as a time to just do nothing. But from what you've said now, that is more like leading you to an early grave. Mm. Yeah, I, 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 I think so. I think you've got to keep yourself really, really active. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, COVID uh, has kept everybody at home. It has helped everybody to develop uh, life at home. And before COVID, I was already working from home. Okay. You know, I come downstairs, and it's important to have a, a, a set routine. You know, I come downstairs, and um, uh, even the way I dress every day, I dress for work. I don't, I don't say I'm here, so I wear shorts and this thing. I like that. I, I, you know, this, 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 this is my, this is my mode. Guys, don't worry, I'll show you the pictures. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> but, but, but this is my mode, and I do that every day. Um, uh, if I have a Skype meeting, uh, I just put on a jacket, mm. you know, and then maybe if I have to put a, a bow tie on, mm -hmm. I have to put it on. But the minute it's gone, it's I take it off. I had a channels. Uh, interview this morning. Okay. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, it's it's such a such a natural routine for me. So so it's fine. So the point is, you you just have to have a, a very very good routine. A bit lax. I don't come down till about ten ten thirty. You know, just try and take it easy. Yeah. But then again, I don't go to bed till about midnight. You know, it's just just out of habit. I understand. Sometimes I can just sit down, just listen to music, mm -hmm. just thinking. Exactly. Really, so it's a no pressure situation. When we have what we did, take a little bit of reading, yes, you do. Uh -huh. uh, but um, again, you know, it's, it's a no pressure situation. Do you write? No, well, that's 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 the greatest uh, because I have a lot of people say, no, I write a book. Uh, I, um, uh, I, I keep I keep piling up all the um, all the notes and scribbles mm. and so on that I've put here over the years and I said to myself that maybe one day I might I might try and do it. Uh, for some reason I just believe that I don't know I I, I don't know how to write. I, have, I haven't tried it. Let me tell you a secret about that. I guess I was in your shoes some years ago until something happened. Almost ended in a tragedy but somehow God used my wife to pull me out of it. That was when I started writing. I've had a series of notes here and there. So I had to like put everything together. So I said, what do I do? Okay. I said, fine, I'm going to start with, uh, I saw this book, The Simple Brutal Thought. I think that's the title. So I saw the way the being, being an author, I arranged the book. It's more of like simple thoughts that we take for granted that actually governs everything we do. So I said, fine, I'm going to put my first book that way, my thoughts, you know, like in a poetic form and all that. It was amazing. My wife was just pushing me. <laughs> she kept pushing me. So that was my first work. So I think you should consider that. So what is that? Did you go to a writing school or whatever? I said, no. All I did was just look at something. And I said, okay, I want to do something like that. You know, just take a cue from it, but I'm going to improve on it. So and ever since, I can't stop it. I just keep piling things. I arrange them. I pile, I arrange them. I pile, I arrange them, like put them in uh, notes. Mm -hmm. Well arranged. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, this will be published on so-and-so -so day. This will be published on so so and so day. And like a fine wine, it gets better by the day. And when it hits me, I go back to it again. 
And I tried to like, okay, let me tweak here, let me to tweak there, let me to. And somehow, <laughs> we're releasing them day after day. And I think you have so much to share with the world. I think that, that's been my problem. They're, they're my children, especially my, 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 my daughters, yeah, but the big, they all say, hi, what do you write? And I say, I don't know. I, I don't know what to write about. If you say, I, would, I said, you know, what do I have to say? I don't see it as a big deal. You know, I, I don't know if I'm still be talking about you just, you just, You just get a title to your work. It's not a big deal. <laughs> It's not a big deal. I was like, what's life to you? It's not a big deal. So you just give a title to it, and honestly, I think you should. Yeah, people have been pushing on, on that. Uh, uh, but I think, um, uh, I'll, 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 I think it's, it's just, I think once I can trigger myself. To yes. Stop. We're, we're, we're behind you, we'll be rooting for you. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. We'll just root for you. You know, amazing. Because discovering the power of words changed me. It did. It did. You know, and some of those are how it became a therapy for me. Like writing is therapeutic. It, it, it allows me to like give or release this energy you know, onto paper, so to say. But I see it take wings and you know go out there and make. I find that I I I have more verbal person. I, I talk better. Mm. You know, somebody, two different some, things anyway. Uh, somebody had said that, uh, oh, when I write uh, some biography, and I said, I don't know about biography, but uh, sharing thoughts, sit down with somebody, talk about it that we're doing now, that person now comes and says, you know, he lets me, let me, uh, let me mm. put it to pen to paper. Maybe, maybe what, what I would be to, to have a digital, which will be based on conversations like this. Yeah. And uh, this conversation with the deaf people, mm. and, uh, and it's digital. So wait, wait, wait. You, you can also consider this, uh, because we, we're, we're living in the age where our attention span is becoming leaner by the pain. So we are now living visual to audio. Yeah, yeah. That's what is happening now. People listen more than seeing now. So it creates that image. So you could, like you said now, create something that it will just be sitting down and talking. But it will be curated, you know, and delivered to the audience. So it's like, ah, where are you going? I'm going to listen to Mr. Phillips. Show notes with Mr. Phillips. So I'm really, have you listened to it? Say, no, go listen to it. I think so, such a thing would also, you know, have that expression. You know, you just discourage and talk me to share ideas and all that is packaged and delivered there. So it becomes, you go to Spotify, Amazon Music or whatever, you listen to it and all that. I think it will work because you have a lot. Well, people say that. You, you never, I, I, I think you, you never, I, I never... I say things and I don't know. I don't know. I listen. I'm very Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hello, nerds. Come listen to the History Nerds United podcast and let's make history fun again. We interview today's best authors, whether they are established Pulitzer Prize winners or someone debuting their first book. Let us show you that history is not a boring class you took in high school, but a place where the best stories come from. And we don't just cover history. We also love to chat about true crime, biographies, memoirs, and so much more. So head on over to History Nerds United and let us introduce you to your new favorite book and learn the story behind the story. History Nerds United. Yeah, that, there's something my wife told me about listening. You know, I have an ear for words. On my way here, I've written down like four things. On my way here, I was like, yes, I heard. Like I heard on the radio, Balogun and Malogun. I'm not Yoruba, but I was trying to follow it. It's that Balogun is a man amongst women. 
I what about a woman amongst men? And they said, ah, that, that should be Malogu. But nobody had heard of that before. <laughs> and the, the cock here about person was like, why are you distorting the word? But that, it just to create the humor. So I just took it down immediately. So it's like, hmm. So that's what I, when I hear people talk, in between, I pick what I know, not I consider, I know this is something that the world needs to hear. You know, so I put it down, try to curate it and share it with the world. And I think the truth is sitting down here with you, I've heard like tons, which I know will change my audience when they listen to it. Like, really? Yes. You know, beautiful moments. Ah, okay. One question, I think. Uh, it's, it's, it's prepare some for us. I just said uh, one way on you. Okay. Just something like No, that, that's okay. Where do you see our country in 2025? I think uh, the answer is very conditional. When I say conditional, it's going to be if this happens, then this happens. If this happens. A domino effect now. Yes. Um, what we see, we have great, um, great people, great nation, whatever it is, that it is so very true. Every aspect of this country that does not involve government interference is successful. Every aspect of this country that does not involve government participation is extremely successful. Uh, that's why art, music, Fashion, entertainment, entertainment, and those things that you see, the day the government starts saying you must go and get license before you can start singing, you know, that type of thing. I'm just being a situation. Mm. You see how that particular industry just died. Right. Our government has not learned the art of making people successful such that it too can be successful. Uh, because um, if I was president. My message to, to, to the country and to my government and to the civil service, especially the civil services, your success is going to be determined by the success of the industry you're responsible for. Mm. Goes out to that saying. And your job is to come back and tell me how many private sector people you've made successful. The private sector is so important because uh, the, the metrics by which you measure yourself is totally different from that of government. The government will assess its performance based on how much of its budget it has spent, mm. as opposed to how much has resulted from the budget spent. Whilst a, a, uh, uh, a private sector person will say, my success depends on how much revenue I've been able to generate, not on how much I've been able to spend. How much revenue I've been able to generate that enriches me, enriching me, it rewards me for that risk that I've taken and allows me to even do more. Okay? And um, and we also got to appreciate what I call the systemic impact of organizations on our lives, i.e., employment. Mm. For every person you employ, that's a mature, that's a family that you're feeding. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, so we go back to the question. Where do we see this country in by 2025? Yes, sir. And uh, I say it's, it's going to depend very, very much on the tone and thinking of leadership. If you have a leader that says that, look, you know what, my job is just to make, and I'll say the private sector, just for want of a better category, to make it successful. Yeah. So how many COOs have you released? How many there are? Applications have been granted. How many of these have we done? How many of that have we done? Almost the very, very, very key in sort of assessing what you do. If it's hospitals, yes, the government will do its own. But how many private sector hospitals have you sort of facilitated that please, please build hospital, build hospital? Because government cannot do everything itself. Yeah. And when you depend on government to do it, you fail. And the only time government will do it is that when they explain it to you so much that the risk return is very negative. The government says, we will take the pain. I would set up a railway system, it's going to cost so much, and I can never recover my cost for another 40, 50 years, but it doesn't matter, because the systemic impact and benefit that the railway brings is going to bring more to the economy yeah. and repay me in a way that I will fund that railway, but not through direct 
but the money and, and peace of mind and prosperity mm. comes to the nation, okay, would more or less compensate what we're doing in the equation of this impose that. The compensate for that investment that you made. But is it going to help the economy to grow? Yes. Is it going to help the economy grow for me? Employing people, employing their health, educating our children, yeah. you know, just being able to live a life for yourself as an individual, no matter where you are in our uh, social, social strata, you know? So that's why I say it's very, very conditional. And until we get a leadership that is thinking that way, it's going to be, it's going to be a bit difficult. We've really got to transit yeah. and move into into that uh, that that kind of mindset. Um, another important part uh, is our election process. How we how leaders can emerge. I once cracked a joke at a public uh, speaking engagement that the day we can digitize our electoral process, I said I'll go to politics. You know, but what I was just trying to say is that I will trust the system so much that I can risk saying, look, you know what, I'm going to politics. Um, and what, what is really behind that is, how can we uh, ensure, my dream, my vision is that on election day, everybody sees that at 12 o'clock, the portal is open. You have your BVN or your electoral card or whatever it is, go in, put in your code, all the people that are uh, show for the place that you can meet in. The name will show, the list the way I click, yes, 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 send. So we start election at 12 o'clock, and we say by 4 o'clock we stop nationwide. And everything is gone into the computer system, and we've had uh, what's this uh, thing that they use now? The algorithm. Algorithm. What's the what's the word they use now? Blockchain. Blockchain. Yes. Okay. And it's the blockchain. Uh, a guaranteed system, and, will, and yes. therefore we we looked at end, it end to end, and, and so we, we we are we are sure that it is, you know, kosher. And then whoever comes to be the leader, and then that way the new generation can move in, because the new generation is so oppressed by the old, because the old own the system, they have the ability to continuous, continuously generate revenue that drives the electoral processes, which is expensive worldwide. Mm -hmm. It isn't just like in this country, you know, that you have to have money. It's not the way it is. The way you spend the money is different. Yeah, all those are so busy paying campaign people, paying uh, all the various infrastructure that support their own electionary process. But here it's more often the issues about bribe and, and very, very um, integrity, challenging abuse. Uh, but start with it if, 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 if. Because uh, for us, we've got to have the transformation of leadership. Mm -hmm. We've got to have a new generation of leaders coming. Mm -hmm. And we've got to have the new generation is new in their thinking. Mm -hmm. If current leaders can, can change their mindset to, to think a lot more yeah. along the lines of what we think and modern economy should be, yeah. then it'll be fine. And not only that, the benefit from Africa, Nigeria, and so on, is once again, uh, what I hope will be a recurring decimal of what's been able to leap from each time. Yeah. What other nations have taken time to evolve to, we just revolve into the revolution yeah. the type of thing more than anything else. You know? That's yeah. it. Yeah. So that 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 is my own response to, to that. Uh, if you're going to carry on the way we do, we'll continue to just go round and round and round. And it's 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 a question of we must change the the thinking we must change this but who is going to like uh build the castle to say the young people have power how many people follow the video how many people follow this one you look at it two million three million one million this one and yet how many people vote every year mm. but don't forget why we see that population of 20 million people how many votes <laughs> so when you now look at the number that votes and the power that we have yes. to engage our young people to say, if we can follow the video and we can create a platform where we can get ourselves to together. And so the transition is yes, we can't do digitally, yeah. but we can do physically. Physically, galvanizing. Hello, guys. It's been. It's still 
an awesome time with Mr. Phillips. Whoa, amazing conversation. I think I've I've heard mind blowing stops today, and I know you too. You have. Uh, life is possible. Living is possible. <laughs> All right, guys. All right. See you when I see you. Bye for now. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Before we sign off, I just want to encourage you. Yeah, it's been a wonderful time. And also, I'd like to hear from you your feedback. You know, you've been listening to the Word Cafe podcast. I would love to hear from you the feedback. If you have any questions, yeah, you go ahead and ask those questions. You can reach me at my email address, amakri garibaldi at gmail.com. Amakri is A M A C H R O double E G A R I B A L D I at gmail.com. Yeah, and uh, we'll get back. You know how we do it on the show. Thank you. Part for time it has been with you on the Word Cafe podcast today. Thank you for being there. You can catch me up on my social media handles, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, all at Amakri Isoboye. Also, you can get copies of my books, A Cocktail of Words, The Color of Words, in my HR notebook on Amazon and on Robin Heights online bookstores. You can also subscribe to my YouTube page at the same address. Yes, till we see you again. Bye for now.